Detective Recapped here. Today, I'm going to explain a drama thriller film called, Hard Candy. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. 14-year-old Haley Stark is a pretty and smart girl who loves reading Zadie Smith's novels. She meets 32-year-old photographer Jeff Colbert, through chat, and the two immediately hit off. They always send flirty messages to each other, and one day, Haley finally decides that they should hook up. Though Jeff is surprised, he still asks where they should meet. Haley replies that she'll ask her sister to drop her off at a coffee shop called the Nighthawks. Haley gets there first, and Jeff arrives while she's eating cake. He sees the chocolate icing on her lips, so Jeff casually removes it with his thumb before licking the icing off. Haley then tells him that he doesn't look like the kind of guy who has to meet girls on the internet, to which Jeff disagrees. He thinks it's better to meet people online first, as it lets you get to know them on the inside. Since he's a photographer, Jeff learned that people's faces lie. This intrigues Haley, and she asks him if her face lies. To this, he teasingly replies that all he sees is a girl who loves reading Zadie Smith and loves listening to Coldplay and John Mayer. He then adds that she is a girl in desperate need of chocolate. Amused, Haley chuckles and agrees before ordering more chocolate along with a decaf latte. As they sit and continue their conversation, a poster on the wall shows a missing girl, Donna Maurer. Jeff then asks what's in her bag, and she says that she brought books to read just in case he stood her up. She continues talking about the books she likes to read, then Jeff asks her if guys hit on her in school. Haley smiles and asks him if he's jealous, but he retorts that he's just admiring her. He comments about how Haley looks and acts older for her age, making her smile wider. Jeff admits that he wasn't expecting someone as impressive as her, and Haley replies in kind. As their little date is about to end, Jeff buys her a shirt from the shop, saying Haley should model it for him. They then talk about the Goldfrap concert, with Jeff saying he was there, making Haley jealous. When asked if the show was good, Jeff tells Haley that he's got a bootleg MP3 of one of the songs from the concert. Though she wants to listen to it now, Jeff insists that he'll just send it to her since he can't just take her to his house. However, after a few more persuasion and flirting, Jeff agrees to take her home. At his house, Jeff offers Haley some water, but she refuses to drink, worried that there's something in it. Instead, she volunteers to make a screwdriver for them. While making the drink, she asks why his model's pictures are on his walls instead of magazines. The charming photographer replies that his house is his studio, so it's important to him that his clients see his giant portfolio once they walk into his home. Haley is surprised that the photos were taken in the house, so Jeff shows her where he takes the pictures. Inside the studio, they continue talking about Jeff's clients, then Haley offers to make some more drinks. They head to the kitchen, and Jeff assumes that Haley's wondering how many of his models he slept with. When she confirms it, he says none. Of course, she doesn't believe him, but Jeff informs her that most of them were underage and that he'd be arrested if they did sleep together. Not entirely convinced, she inquires as to why he wasn't arrested for photographing them like that. After all, his young models look seductive in his photos, but Jeff assures her he's aware of the legal boundaries. Finally, he admits to sleeping with one of them when they were younger, and when Haley questions if she's one of the girls on the walls, Jeff replies no. Without invitation, Haley goes to Jeff's bedroom, where she finds more than one photo of a girl on the wall. Jeff tells her that the girl's name is Janelle, and Haley sees the date March 19th at the back of the photo. Haley assumes that Janelle was Jeff's girlfriend, and he says she's right, adding that he's learned everything he knew from practicing on her. Haley then asks where Janelle is, and Jeff tells her that she had signed with Ford after that photoshoot. Suddenly, Haley says that she recognizes Janelle from the magazines, then remarks that he still loves Janelle. However, Jeff denies it, saying he only loves how simple things were back then, and he doesn't want to forget that. But beyond that, they've moved on. The two sit down, and Haley observes he must be lonely, but he tells her that he's not. To lighten up the mood, she asks him to take photos of her, but he's reluctant, saying taking pictures of girls means they have to open up. Jeff keeps pausing while speaking as if he's feeling ill, but he tells Haley he's fine when she asked. After finally agreeing to take photos of her, Jeff invites Haley to his studio. Ignoring his invitation, she goes to the living area, puts a CD in the player, then asks him to shoot her there. Loud music starts playing, and Haley begins to dance and strip off her clothes while standing on the couch. Jeff starts feeling dizzy and tells her to stop the music, but he starts taking her pictures anyway. Haley teases Jeff with her poses, and as she continues dancing on the couch, Jeff tells her to listen to him. When she ignores him, Jeff gets pissed and shouts, ordering her to sit down. He then staggers, saying he doesn't feel good before finally losing consciousness. Jeff wakes up in a dizzy haze, bound to an office chair. When Haley shows up, she confesses to drugging him. Thinking that Haley tied him for fun, he asks why he's tied up, and with a serious tone, Haley tells him that playtime's over. She lets Jeff know that this isn't a joke, and when he demands her to let him go, she only tells him to be patient. Haley leaves to check something, and when she returned, Jeff asks her what she's doing. She returns the question, demanding to know why he lives in a house filled with photographs of half-naked teenage girls. Jeff screams for help as she speaks, so she sprays something into his mouth, saying no one will hear him. She says she waited exactly for that day, making sure that his neighbors are away. Haley warns him to keep quiet, or she'll spray bleach into his mouth next. Shocked, Jeff accuses her of stalking him, but she says he's the one stalking her. She reveals that she went to different chat rooms using various nicknames and that he talked to all of them but dropped them as soon as he found out that they weren't as young as her. 
She also states that he'd always seemed so knowledgeable about every band or singer she'd mention, but he also took a while to reply, probably because he had to look them up. Still left with the belief that Haley's playing around, Jeff promises that he only wanted to impress her. That doesn't mean that he deserves to be tied up and tortured. Surprised by his choice of words, Haley retorts that what she's doing to him is nothing. Haley sits on the couch and then mocks Jeff for doing extensive research about her even though he knows she's only 14, but Jeff insists that he's a decent guy and tells her that she can ask his models about him. However, Haley sarcastically replies that those girls were his work while she was his play. Jeff is quick to defend himself, claiming that Haley is coming on to him. Haley only scoffs at this, telling him that that's what all degenerates like him say and that they always put the blame on the kid. Haley admonishes him, and since he's the adult, he should ignore a kid when she says something flirty instead of encouraging him. Jeff then replies that he's been lonely, which makes him stupid, but he maintains that he's not into kids. He swears that this is all a horrible mistake before demanding her to untie him again. His reasoning only makes her mad, and Haley says she'll call a cab for herself once she's ready to go. She'll call another one to let him loose, too, only she isn't sure when that will be. Haley takes Jeff to his bedroom and goes through all his drawers, looking for anything that will tell her what kind of a child-loving degenerate he is. Jeff repeats that he's not a degenerate, then instructs her to open a drawer in the living room where she'll find prints of his work for different environmental groups. Haley only mocks him again, saying just because he loves nature doesn't make him a nice guy. She also accuses him of being an assaulter and hurting someone, but he insists that he's never done that. As they argue, Haley finds letters in Jeff's drawers, and when he protests that those are his, she ignores him. Haley reads Jeff's letters, saying he's lied when he said he didn't love Janelle anymore. Jeff argues that he thought about selling them on eBay, but Haley doesn't believe him. Eventually, Jeff tells her the truth about how he considered sending them to Janelle to remind her how despicable she was. When asked if Janelle broke his heart, Jeff only evades the question. After a few more questions about his ex-girlfriend, Haley goes through his computer and learns that Jeff has pulled off photos from the net, but she can't find them. So, Haley asks him where the hiding place is, but Jeff promises he doesn't have one. Haley notes that she searched the house and hasn't found a single vulgar material yet. Still, she realizes that maybe those pictures of teenage girls on his walls are his vulgar materials before concluding that he's probably hiding something more indecent. As if she's running out of time, Haley starts going through his filing cabinet and looking under his bed, only to find a gun in a small box. She tosses the gun on the bed and continues her search in the living room while Jeff tries his damnedest to break free. Haley removes the photos from the walls, looks under the couch, and still, nothing. Before Jeff could break free, Haley finds a safe. Haley asks Jeff for the code, but he is determined not to give it to her. She contends that she'll figure it out, so he might as well just tell her, but Jeff keeps his lips sealed. When asked if her parents won't worry about her being late for dinner, Haley says that they won't be. That's when Jeff deduces that since her parents are too busy to keep track of her, she reaches out to someone else who'd care. Thinking he might be able to trick Haley with his honeyed words, he says that maybe she's mad at her parents for ignoring her. Haley only listens to him, and as Jeff continues talking, he promises that they can talk about her problems, and he'll even call a cab for her. Getting emotional, Haley walks up to him and asks him if he won't be angry at her, and he says he won't be. To Jeff's surprise and embarrassment, Haley only starts laughing, asking him if he actually believed the trick would work on her. She sarcastically praises him for being good at what he does, like putting teenage girls at ease so they would tell him their secrets. Jeff tries to deny this, but again, Haley only ignores him. Haley takes Jeff back to the living room where the safe is, and after a few failed attempts, she's able to open the safe using the date at the back of Janelle's photo, saying that might be the year they first slept together. Inside are pictures of a girl that make Haley thoughtful, saying federal laws are made for those kinds of photos. Haley continues looking at them while Jeff watches, and a lone tear runs down his eye. She asks him what's so special about the girl in the picture before squatting in front of him, saying that she recognizes her. Suddenly, Jeff kicks her, and she hits her head on the table. With Haley sprawling on the floor, Jeff slides his chair away from her. He goes to his bedroom, and despite being bound, he manages to dive on the bed and get the gun before returning to the living area, only to find Haley missing. He searches for her with a gun still in hand, but Haley attacks him from behind and suffocates him with a plastic wrap. Jeff struggles and tries to slide his chair backward to pin her against the closet, but he ends up losing consciousness. Upset about their fight, Haley screams and repeatedly hits her back against the wall. When Jeff wakes up, he is bound to a steel table with no pants on, and a pack of ice on his private parts. Haley starts interrogating him, asking why he has a picture of Donna Maurer in his safe and if he's seen her, so Jeff admits to meeting her for coffee. He stresses that he took a picture of her outside the coffee shop, but he never brought her home. Doubtful, she says he could have thrown her photo away, but he chose to hold on to it instead. Haley teases that he has something to hide, but Jeff tells her that even though he's crossed a line, he's not the monster she thinks he is. Jeff then tells Haley to call the cops, saying he'll turn himself in, but Haley only ridicules him, saying that he's just sick and has an addiction. Tired of arguing with Haley, Jeff asks her what the ice is for, and she reveals that she plans to castrate him. As she is about to shave his privates, Jeff struggles, forcing Haley to stop, saying that he's not numb enough yet. Trying to get out of his predicament, Jeff tells Haley that once she cuts him, she'll never forget it. He claims that hurting a person changes someone and that it will change her. He also adds that the things she'll do will someday haunt her, but unfortunately for him, his sweet talking doesn't work on Haley. 
As Haley prepares to castrate him, Jeff screams for help, making Haley spray bleach into his mouth. She warns him to stop moving before starting to shave the area around his private parts. Jeff panics, so he bribes her with money and anything that she might want to take, like his camera equipment. Unmoved, Haley firmly tells him there's no way of talking her out of it. She then uses vodka to sterilize him, and when she notices that he's still not numb enough, she puts the ice pack back on him and leaves. While Haley is away, Jeff tries to reach the phone on the table, but Haley comes back before he could do it. He asks her to just kill him, but Haley tells him that's not what she wants. Then, Haley sets up the camera and connects it to the television so Jeff can watch. Still in his campaign to earn the hard-boiled girl's sympathy, Jeff starts babbling about the time he stayed with his Aunt Denise's family. He says he was about nine at the time, and she had a young daughter who was about four or five. She loved to get out of the bathtub naked, jump on top of Jeff, and tickle him. One day, his aunt walked in on them, and she got mad, so he took Jeff to the kitchen. There, she turned on the stove, and as the burner got hot, she pulled down his pants and lifted him over the burner. However, Haley isn't swayed by the story and continues to prepare for the castration. Jeff begs her to stop, then asks her to call the cops so he can confess to whatever she wants him to. Haley stays determined to castrate Jeff, so he cries as he offers to do whatever she wants him to. Haley proceeds with the castration, anyway, and tells Jeff that his sob story doesn't explain why he's the way he is. As she castrates him, Haley describes every step she makes to him, which she read from the book she's brought, to make him feel worse. Once she's done, Haley shows him his castrated private parts and asks what he wants to do with them. When Jeff doesn't reply, she throws them in the grinder in the sink. Their conversation goes back to Donna, and he still insists that he didn't do anything to her. Haley suggests that Jeff should find the person responsible, then warns him ominously that he has no idea what's coming to him. Giving him a breather, Haley tells him that she'll just take a shower, and when he threatens her that he will find her, Haley reminds him not to make threats while still tied down. Haley adds that the easiest thing for her to do would be to kill him, but as she's already mentioned earlier, that's not what she wants. Jeff painfully manages to untie his hands, and as he gets up, he is relieved to see that he isn't castrated, after all. The video playing on the television is just a VHS of castration procedures. Jeff is about to call 911 but decides not to and instead picks up a scalpel before looking for Haley. Jeff goes to the bathroom, opens the shower curtain, only to find it empty. Haley then appears from behind and pushes him into the bathtub before tasting him, making him lose consciousness once more. After all that, Haley starts cleaning the house, carefully wiping her fingerprints off of everything. She suddenly sees Jeff crawling in the hallway, so she tastes him again. Haley then writes a suicide note on Jeff's laptop before posing as a police officer to call Janelle. She asks Janelle to come to Jeff's house immediately, saying there's been an accident. Jeff is bound once more when he regains consciousness, standing on a chair with a noose around his neck. Haley then removes the rope supporting his body while was passed out, and with that, he starts to feel the pressure of the noose around his neck. Jeff calls Haley insane, and while they talk, someone rings the doorbell. Jeff screams, but Haley immediately gags him. When Haley opens the door, it's just one of Jeff's neighbors selling cookies. With no cash, Haley gets back inside to get money from Jeff's pocket before paying for them. When the neighbor is gone, Haley asks Jeff to commit suicide by hanging, and in exchange, she won't expose him for killing Donna Maurer. Again, Jeff denies killing Donna. As Haley steps closer to him, Jeff lifts his legs over her shoulders, using her to support his weight to get a chance to stand on the table. Haley rushes outside while Jeff removes the noose around his neck and unties himself using a knife. Jeff goes after Haley, not knowing that she has circled back to the house to get the noose. After leaving a clue on the ground, Jeff finally finds Haley on the rooftop. Using Jeff's gun, Haley orders him to get rid of the knife and put the noose back around his neck. There, she reveals that she called Janelle earlier and that she's on his way to his house. Haley threatens him that if he doesn't kill himself, she'll remove her clothes and run into Janelle's arms. After that, Janelle will see all the evidence of his involvement in Donna Maurer's disappearance. For the last time, Jeff insists that he didn't kill Donna but he admits to watching another man who did. Jeff desperately offers to tell her his name, but Haley admits that she already knows Aaron. According to her, Aaron claimed that it was Jeff who did it before he killed himself. Meanwhile, Janelle searches for Jeff downstairs. Defeated, Jeff lets Haley put the noose back around his neck. He walks over to the edge and looks back at Haley one last time, who assures him that she'll take care of all the evidence against him. The cops start showing up, and at last, Jeff jumps off the roof. With Jeff dying before her, Haley reveals that she really has no intention of getting rid of the evidence of Jeff's involvement in Donna's disappearance. Finally, Haley gathers her belongings and escapes through the woods. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.